There are just two days left and I am nowhere near done with the game. Alright, let's do this one last time. The Brackies Game Jam is a week-long event hosted by Brackies. You know, the guy who makes all the tutorials. In it, participants are given a theme and a week, and they must create a game within that time frame, incorporating that theme. But you probably already know that. The real thing that I'm doing this game jam is learning another major engine, the Godot engine. I've tried out Godot in the past, and its node system is very interesting, and GD script seems simple and powerful. After this, the only big engine I'll actually have left to learn will be Unreal. But anyways, the main goal of this will be to make a functioning game and learn the basics of Godot. I don't really care if the game is a masterpiece or anything, I just want to finish it. And the theme is... Rewind. Cool. Anyways, I wasn't actually home for most of the first day and ended up not having any time to start the game. Which ended up kinda haunting me later, but we'll get to that. My plan for the game is a Hotline Miami style top-down hack and slash game. Everything including you will basically be one a shot. The levels will be small and killing the enemies will rely a lot on timing and precision. Fitting in the theme was kind of difficult, but I ended up just putting it into the lore of the game. You know, the lazy way to do it. You are the Time Reaper. The lesser known cousin of the Grim Reaper. Your job is to stop abnormalities like time travel and other abominations by solving the problem in the best way possible by killing people. In the game, you have to kill medieval sorcerers and knights that use dark magic to come to the present day. Today, I finally started on the game. I had an idea, now I just had to figure out how to make it. I started by watching a great heartbeat tutorial on making top-down movement, and after messing around with some settings, it was feeling pretty good. The next step was adding some art, so I made a basic character and some enemies. I then added a weapon, the scythe. I spelled it wrong every time in the game, so it's actually a scythe with a K, which is pronounced the same way, but whatever. The scythe just goes around the player and points at the mouse. After adding the scythe, I decided to try out the animation system in Godot. It's pretty similar to Unity's, but it has some neat features. Like the fact that you can basically animate any value on an object. Not just like position and movement, but also stuff like if a collider is activated or not. I added a basic bouncing animation for the walk. And after messing around with some animation trees before removing said trees, I got a simple bouncy walk animation. I'm trying to keep animations to a minimum for this game, so expect lots of bouncing and rotating stuff. Making the scythe attack was the last thing I ended up doing, because it took forever. I kept restructuring and recreating the scythe scene before finally making it out of two kinematic bodies stacked on top of each other. The top one didn't have a collider, and this was so that the top kinematic body could point at the mouse and the bottom one could be animated. I got off to a good start today, so I finished up the attack animation and made the player flip left and right when I'm walking. Now I need to make the attack work, and the collision already moves with the scythe whenever it attacks, so I just need to figure out how to activate and deactivate it. After some searching around the documentation, I figured out that I should probably be using Area 2D and not the colliders to check for the scythe's attack. My number one pro about using Godot so far is the fact that the documentation is absolutely incredible. There are tons of guides and examples, and just searching up the name of a method or node or whatever will probably give you an in-depth guide to basically everything that there is to be known about it. And after fiddling around with some signals and stuff, whenever I hit the enemy, it gives me a little log message. So I then add a script to the enemy and call the function in the enemy whenever it gets hit. Now that the enemy can detect whenever it gets hit, I need to make it do something. I tried for a while to make a knockback system, but I didn't quite get it. And I've been working on this for a while now, so I'm going to take a break and catch up with you later. Um, I actually ended up not doing anything else on Monday, but whatever. Anyways, I ended up making a nice new animation for the attack, and now it feels and works much better. And then, because I have terrible priorities, I set up Screen Shake. It didn't take that long, and the game feels so much better now. Oh, I finally got knockback working for the enemy. I actually just had to figure out how to correctly get the position of the enemy, which was a pretty simple issue I should have figured out earlier. Whoops. So far, progress has been incredibly slow but I should hopefully be able to speed it up today and make some progress. First off, enemy behavior. I have to make them able to attack, see, and search for the player. First off, seeing. I set up a line of sight area 2D. If the player is in it, then the enemy runs a raycast from its point to the player's position. If this raycast determines that there is not a wall or something in between the player and enemy, then the enemy determines that the player is in its line of sight. And now it's time for the movement. 
I looked at the pathfinding documentation for a while, and then set up a system to set an object to the player's position whenever the player is seen. And I just need to make that enemy pathfind to that position. I followed an online tutorial by David Pesquet, I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, which is linked in the description. And I actually had to update my Godot version to 3.11 to use a method it's in the tutorial. But anyways, whenever the player is in the line of sight of the enemy, the enemy will set its pathfinding port to the player and walk over to it. I have basic pathfinding. <laughs> it's now time to finish the two types of enemies. The melee enemy will simply run at the player really fast, and if he hits the player, the player dies. I made it so both the enemy and the player can die now, and if the player dies, a scythe is despawned and he can't move. Whenever the enemy is killed, he can't move, and he also stops pathfinding in order to save on resources. I spent a while accounting for different things that might happen, like making the enemy stand still after killing the player, making the enemy move slower if not chasing the player, and making it so that the enemy can patrol between two points. The patrolling works by putting a script on the enemy's target position that makes it go between two points that I can set in the editor. Though it took some bug fixing and restarting Godot because the project wouldn't save for some reason, I got it to work. I now realize that I need the enemy to face the general direction that they're looking in, which requires more sprites, but I need to make the ranged enemy, so I'm going to do that later. The ranged enemy is a copy of the knight, but with a different sprite and an altered script. The new script makes it so that instead of running at the player whenever he sees it, the ranger actually freezes and starts a short countdown to shoot. The way I made it freeze was actually by literally just making it have a chase speed of zero. If the player has been spotted and gets out of the ranger's view, then the ranger will move to the point where it last saw the player. Now making a shoot was just setting up a timer and then figuring out how to instantiate objects. I made a fireball scene that the enemy instantiates, but the difficult part was making the fireball aim at the player. I hit a major bottleneck there, and I spent around an hour just trying to get the stupid bullet to aim at the player and move at the player, but it just wouldn't. I finally decided to give up and made some more art, which isn't great, but my only objective at this point is to complete the game. I'll need to do a lot in order to finish tomorrow. It's the final day of the jam and I have to be completely finished with it by 9pm because I have stuff to do after that. So let's go. I started off by redoing the tile set for the room. Now it looks a little bit less gaudy. It took a few tries to get the colors right but now I'm moving on to finalizing the enemies. I need to iron out a few bugs with the melee enemy and make the ranger work. The melee enemy's bugs were all fixed but the ranger still doesn't work. Whatever, I need to keep moving. I then created sprites for the enemies facing up, and made some animations for looking left, right, and up in Godot. There was no need for a down animation. I made these animations so you can actually tell which way the enemy is looking. The way the animations work is by checking the rotation of the line of sight, and then running the series of if statements to see which direction it's sort of facing in. It wasn't working until I realized that I had to change my rotation into degrees for the code to work. Oops. And since I was working on animations, I then moved on to making some basic death sprites for the enemies in order to add a bit more impact to killing them. And they were really simple to make and implement. I kept trying to fix up the ranger enemies, but they just were not aiming right. Whatever, I need to make some levels. I set up navigation and collision for my tile set, and I got to work making some levels. You win the level after killing all enemies, and the transition between levels is absolutely awful. But unfortunately, it was all I could do right now. Though I was planning 10 levels, I ended up making 5, but I like to think they were pretty decent. I quickly added some sound effects in the game using SFXR, and added some music made by Evan King of d &E fame. And it's 9pm. I gotta go. I didn't finish the game in time. Nah, I'm just kidding. But I just got back, and it's past midnight now. I still have 4 hours to finish the game though, so let's get going. I first off had to finally fix the ranger enemy. While I was gone, I looked around the mine and finally found an answer on the Kids Can Code website, and it didn't work. I ended up experimenting and changing my code until for some reason I got the idea to move my code from the ready function into the first frame of the process function. And for some reason it works perfectly now. Yeah, that was a waste of time. Anyways, I finalized the game and added a simple end screen. Made a super basic cover, exported it for PC and web, and put it all together on the itch page. And anyways, the game is now available to play on itch.io. Give it a try. I enjoyed my time with Godot, even if using it probably made my game a lot worse thanks to my lack of experience with it. But whatever. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe. Bye.